Hello and welcome to our first episode of Radio AK, a talk show hosted by RK Kion, Tag Codex, and all things Final Fantasy XIV. I'm your host, Itsunair. Now, before we begin, what is Radio AK? Well, this is a project by the free company RK Kellen on the Lamia server, on Primal, on, well, the game Final Fantasy XIV. If you're on our server, you've probably seen somebody with the tag Codex, whether it's doing in-game stuff, or our role players are out on the field, or whatever. That's us, and we're here to get some opinions and speculations from our free company members. So today, I have some lovely people with me. Say hello, lovely people. Hello, lovely people. Hello, hey, yo! Lovely people. <laughs> hello, lovely people. <laughs> wow. Alright, so on this episode of Radio AK, we are going to be talking about the ending of Stormblood, leading into the final cutscene of 4.2. Now keep in mind that because this is the ending of the expansion, we are going to be going into some spoilers. So if you aren't at this point yet, I would highly suggest you go through Stormblood. Um, and if you don't have it, Go get it! It is so good, it is worth the expansion! Um, so, on that note, can I get a ready check, please? And taking this again, just to remind you that, um, there are spoilers that are going to be happening in this discussion. We are talking about the late- the ending of the latest expansion and 4.2, which is currently where the rest of the game is at. Um, so if you are not there yet and don't want to spell the story for yourself, unfortunately this episode of 8K Radio is not for you. Go and finish Stormblood or go get it or go watch a movie or something because there are spoilers here. <laughs> um, but don't worry, we will be making more episodes and we will be making more episodes that will be not spoilers. <laughs> On that note, I looks like I missed the ready check, but I am good to go. So let's start on it. So just to recap, we are talking about the ending of Stormblood. In particular, what was under that mask that Elidibus pulled off? So to recap, um, in this level 70 quest Stormblood cutscene 5, Xenos Ye Gelvis, main uh, antagonist of Stormblood, Finally, after the entire expansion, feels something, something, and after having his butt handed to him by the w Warrior Blight and Company, dies only by killing himself with his sword. Um, fast forward to cutscene 7 of the same quest. Varys Zos Galvis, his father, is visited by Elidibus, the white-robed Asian, who reveals something is beneath his mask, somehow insulting Varys, who then goes, how dare you? What's up with that? Uh, level 70 quest, Rise of a New Sun from 4.2. Uh, we get a little bit of dra dramatic irony when we get to see into the Imperial Castle and lo and behold, Xenos is there recovering with some bandages around his neck. So what's going on with that? I would like to ask my lovely people for their opinions and speculations. Go my lovely people. So, I think that uh, the Xenos we see in in the most recent cutscene is not actually Xenos. It's I think it's the White Robed Asian. Now, <laughs> at the end of um, Stormblood, I actually thought he had like you know probably like a chicken nugget underneath that mask. Oh my god! <laughs> and he just really didn't like chicken nuggets, but. That all changed with, like, the most recent, like, update at the end where they show Xenos alive again. I think, now, don't get me crazy, I think Xenos is a chicken nugget. But that's just me. <laughs> that's just me. So, what I believe is, Asians need to possess somebody to have physical forms in Eurasia, correct? Yes. Yes. So I think he possessed the corpse and resurrected it. See, that's my running theory, too. I think that makes sense. So, my idea of what's probably going to happen in the future is because Zenos has the artificial echo, right? Yeah, the resonant. I feel like he'll break control of the Asian using that and come back to life fully. Yeah, that'd be kind of neat. Ooh. That would uh, be kind of neat. See, the reason I think he's straight up dead is because, based on context clues uh, in 4.1, 
we find out that they buried Xenos. And so it really wouldn't make much sense for them to bury him, go through that whole process, and have people take his corpse away without finding out he was dead in the first place. That doesn't really make sense. That could just be a translation error, but uh, I doubt that's the case. Also, um, if I remember correctly, uh, I think one of the characters even says, like, we have to make sure that Xenos is dead. Like, as in, like, they wanted to, like, double check just to make sure. So, even gives more, even more rise to that white Asian taking his, taking, um, taking his form. And also, it would explain why his father was so offended by the white Asian in that one seat. You see, here's the thing, is that all the naysayers, this is what they're going for, is that they think that uh, Xenos wouldn't cause his father to have that sort of reaction with the white-robed Asian revealing himself. Uh, because in that very same cutscene, he he calls his own son a monster and he, he pretty much like, you know, was going to happen like this eventually, probably. Like, like he basically was like, yeah, uh, it, that's my son. It's whatever. He was like kind of disposable. So, wow. <laughs> things they think that actually might have been uh one of the guardian generals i think they said uh uh the one from from a realm reborn that you fight at the end i can't remember his name guys Von Von yeah that guy uh they think it might be him because uh apparently he was really close friends with the emperor uh before he became the emperor Oh. I didn't think about that. So yeah, and if that is the case, and that the white robed Asian was not in Xenos' body, um, then I think this is going to be a really big cop out, and I really don't want actual Xenos to just have survived that whole ordeal. But I mean, come on, Xenos wields three like three katanas, not one, not two, three. The, like, the dude, sorry guys. He's, he, he's pretty a big deal. <laughs> well, because they already dedicated, like basically a whole dungeon to him, and then you fight him again in that you know, for the the trial immediately following that, and it's all resolved. It's it's got like a nice little bow on it and everything, and then, like, you, they they tied up all the loose ends involving Xenos. It was a good ending. So if he's coming, if now that he's back, there had better be a good reason for him to be back, or it's going to completely undermine the ending of the original Stormblood. Uh, if I may add, uh, I'm not sure if this is like some sort of. Uh, sorry, uh, the the character models for the White Ashian, the White Robe Ashian, and uh, the Xenos, I do not think they would be aligned and i mean you know they they aren't really the same height i don't think uh so i would i would lean more toward thinking that the ashian is uh gaius von belsar in that respect because uh, gaius wasn't exactly like tall tall was he this no, he was, he was, he should be a regular person. Size. He was like tall, he, just clunky. Yeah, just like the size of uh, Max Height here. But Xenos, he was tall. He was huge. He was a tall boy. Tall boy. <laughs> tall boy. So my, my counter to that would be that uh, I personally wouldn't put too much stock in the model they used. Just because uh, in the past, they've used mismatched models before for for more than a few reasons. Uh, for example, Hildebrand's uh, the dark uh, figure that will always show up at the end of the chapters. Uh, the model that they used for that ended up being absolutely nothing like uh, the actual character it ended up being. Uh, uh, rather, uh, for Lady Yugiri, actually, in A Realm Reborn, uh, because the Aura models weren't finished at the time, 
she actually used a modified Mikote model. And that's why all of her animations up until Heavensward are actually Mikote animations, uh, because they use the same they use the same base. So it's possible that they chose to keep or they chose to keep the white robe Cassian the same look because changing the model would have just confused the players right because they're going to look at it and like well maybe this is this is this the same white robed Cassian that we've seen in all the other cutscenes he doesn't even show up that often so changing things up might you know complicate things not to mention they'd have to make adjustments to the uh, the model itself for the robe and then uh, what would the payoff be for that? Or do they want, if it is going to be Xenos, do they want to lean so heavily into that that you look at the model and be like, oh, that's Xenos. That's the only person it could be. Or do they want to leave it up to discussion and interpretation up and so that you know people will talk about it and try to figure it out up until the, the big reveal? I just want to have a fun time adventures with Xenos. I want to <laughs> team up and fight evil. <laughs> Slash be evil. Because I don't really care. <laughs> so right now the two things were underneath that mask could be Gaius or what was it? Zenos, Gaius right? or Zenos. Or, you know, the secret third option, Chicken Nugget. <laughs> Not the Chicken Nugget. I what if think, he... uh, just hold on. What if he secretly turned into us? We just didn't know it. <sighs> of course, this that actually does bring up a good point. It is entirely possible that the face reveal is a is a red herring and has nothing to do with Xenos or Gaius or anything. It's just something they made to make us get all discussion based. Well, yeah, rather like a plot point later. It could have been actually could have been the Emperor's father, who uh whose throne he assumed at the beginning of Heaven's War, I think. Or it was the Emperor himself saying, I can be you. See, there, like, yeah, that could entirely be the thing. It could have been, we could have been reading this this cutscene entirely wrong from the beginning, and Xenos would totally just be alive and be kind of lame. Do you think? Do you think? I'd be gets, happy. Do you think we get to fight the White Ashen? We ought to at some point. I want to kick his butt. It's like I'm sitting here. He's like two expansions into the game. We haven't necessarily. Because he's. Him. Not a direct antagonist of us, he just makes our antagonists. Yeah, like, that is true. His whole point is that he's trying to take a different approach to the rejoining as his brothers. So his brothers are very direct, like straight up, they just want to cause calamities left and right, kill some dudes in, in the process. The the white ass scene is sort of the, the anti piece that like, he he's a lot more subversion, a lot more balance. Uh, he doesn't want to kill the warrior of light unless until it's absolutely necessary because from his perspective and what i think is that uh we're just as much an asset the warrior of light is just as much an asset to him as any of the villains that he's created thus far because we make more villains by being so good that's fair that's the dude that talked to Rianje, right like towards like the end of heaven's ah, word man i think so I remember that really, really cryptic, um, uh, it was the end of, like, yeah, it was, like, the last scene, I think, before, or cutscene before, like, Stormblood actually came out. It was, like, really, really cryptic. I think I know, I think I remember what you were talking yeah. about. The scene where, like, Uriyan J goes back, and he's in the same, um, in the same, like, facial area that most Asians beat in. Yeah. And there he is, wearing the white cloak. Well, I mean, I think he was... was wearing a white cloak, and I was like, "Noni." I mean, there was that, like, the, there was the whole Orianje like betraying them and stuff. But like, I don't know, something wasn't adding up to me personally. But I might have missed something. <laughs> any more ideas about Zenos that we had? Um, did they- when did they bury him? Uh, sometime between the end of 4.0 and the beginning of 4.1. Was that like implied... an actual piece of di dialogue? Uh, there's an implied burial because I think, uh, her name's not Ida anymore, it's, uh, Lise. 
least talking about how the disgruntled uh, Alamegans wanted to find and defile Xenos' corpse. And so that's why they never disclosed the location of his tomb. So the implication is that he has a tomb and that they did bury him. What if it's a clone? Oh, crap. Let's try to clone the Oh, yeah, that's, that's, very, that's actually very much impossible. No, well, if it's a clone, then why would they go out of the way to, you know, bandage him and stuff unless they want to, like, Make write, him... you know, write it off to the Imperials that, yeah, he's fine. He just came back. Because maybe they don't want to make public panic happen in the Empire, so they pretend to just make a clone and then pretend it's the real guy. Oh, there's that one cat scene where they're talking, where like some garlands are talking, and they're like, someone was like, "Oh, it's too bad that Zenos is dead," and the other person's like, "What are you talking about? He was like in the capital like the other day." Yeah, they're like, "He's not even. He's not dead." Do you really believe those savages and their rumors? Uh. So yeah, if and he I... is if he is a clone, then the reason they would have bandaged him would be to make it look like he didn't die. And that's an interesting thought. Plus that little douchebag's convinced that he's alive. Oh my god, I forgot about him. Who? I blocked him out of my memory. Who? See? Oh, that guy. Okay. <laughs> <Cool>. Yes. <laughs> the guy at the end of 4.2. I don't even know his name. The, oh, like... the little the, the the fuck the dude with the fuck boy cut. Yeah, the yes. wannabe prince. Oh, uh, Asahi? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, well, it's not the beer. Anyways. Uh, yeah, he's... I wonder if he has anything to do with it. You know what? I'm actually thinking he... Because he he's... was... He he was kind of buddy-buddy with the whole Xenos concept. A little too much, if you ask me. Was he? He was obsessed yeah. with it. A little, like, more than not. More than not. Well, I mean, <laughs> maybe now. I mean, they did show that whole um, cutscene where Xenos literally comes out and saves them from dying to the uh, to the uh, resistance. Hey, me and Xenos shared a connection. I was his only friend. Uh, I had made him feel things he's never felt before. He said so in a cutscene. Stop. <laughs> stop. Yeah, like stop. friendship and love. And joy. Pain. Mostly pain. Yeah, uh, I, I must have heard. I was watching the cutscenes again earlier. Um, I mean, this probably holds this with a grain of salt, but um, I guess I'm really bad at biology, but he, like, basically cut his neck, right? And then, like, fell. Yeah. Um, That's not he, beheading. It's not. He could have sliced his throat, but not cut into his carotid, which produces a lot of blood just because it's a key area. But if he didn't cut deep enough to hit his carotid, he could possibly live if you put pressure on it. Now, now don't read too much of that kind of thing. It's a, you know, it's a dramatic uh, story. It, usually in these kinds of things, the, you know, the, if the author uh, demonstrates that they're dead, that... Uh, they're not going to have survived because of a like an anatomy thing in most cases. Okay. Uh, may I point something out? The sword that he uses is the sword that he was given to uh, as an offering from uh, Yotsuyu. Do you? But do we know where that sword came from? Yes, actually, they um they show it in the cutscene. Yes, but from where? You mean like the significance of the origins of the sword? Yes. Uh, you know, they don't actually say. It's just that it was made by a particularly skilled craftsman in Doma. In Doma? Yeah. Wouldn't that be the dude that was like, the the, the like crazy dude just oh, outside yeah. the ruins? Uh, it's never stated. That's I wonder so if it's brought up in the Black Mage storyline. Black, Blacksmith storyline, my bad. It's like, Black Mage? What? <laughs> so would that sword be called the Zeno Slayer and become super famous? Because it's oh a sword God. that, you know, he used it to kill himself. He also used, like, he, he used it to kill a bunch of other people. So would that be a famous sword that's worth a lot of money now? Like, who got that? Who got all of his swords and his cool sword gun thing? Uh, I would imagine they were claimed by the Alamegans. The Alan okay, Vegans so I've got a, I've got a, I've got a, I've got a, I've got a head cannon. Yeah, what's going on? Um, so, 
they set up a, a weapons display in the Alamegan throne room, you know, where they have all of those meetings. <laughs> Xenos is gonna come back and come for their asses for for doing whatever the heck they did, right? Because remember, because like, would, are Ishians able to bring someone back to life or at least like kind of resuscitate them? Uh, it's never been demonstrated. Oh, I guess not, but whatever, the, the Xenos from 4.2 is gonna come into the friggin' throne room and be like, you know what? That's my sword. I'm taking back that sword. And uh, then we get another trial. Quick thing, we've seen the Astin build, the, like, people who have the Echo are able to re be reborn into other people's bodies and transform that body into their body. Maybe the Astians used his fake Echo to facilitate that fact in an unknowing victim and reformed it into his body. That's possible. That is possible, we, actually. We saw it during the Leviathan and Sahagin quest in however long ago it was. Ah, yeah. uh, yes. Fantasia addiction. But I think there was supposed to be this this implication that the reason that worked uh, was because I know for the Asians, the way you destroy them is by destroying their crystal of darkness. Uh, and that uh, the way the Warriors of Darkness did the same thing was that they had they used a similar effect with their Crystals of Light. So, uh, unless we learn more about the specifics of how the Sahagin did it, which I think was because, you know, proximity and similarity in like, biology, uh, that a normal Echo user would not have the ability to do that without having already put their soul into a catalyst. Well, their science was weird. Like, they took this extract of other people's soul to give it to other people. It was really weird. Probably had some weird science behind it. The resonant? Yeah. Well, the resonant was made by taking out the part of a, someone's soul that gives them the echo and putting it in somebody else. Could that that, that still doesn't, you know, that doesn't solve the... The, the need for the catalysts to, to make yourself, you know, immortal. Or if the machine itself was the catalyst. And they had a backup machine somewhere else. Well, I, I guess, but I think they needed to have the crystal of darkness on them for it to work. Hmm. So, you know, they, like, so for example, when we fought La Habrea and we killed him the first time, but he got away. Um, yeah. The idea is that you kill the physical Asian. They retreat into their crystal of darkness, and then they hide in the void until they're able to find a new host. All right. Well, it looks like we're reaching the the twenty three minute mark. Are well, there any final comments that anybody's got to contribute? Zenos is the best waifu. No. <laughs> I really don't uh, like your, chicken nuggets. Your comment is invalid. Oh my god. I'm just, I'm just wondering about the situation with uh, Gosetsu and, and Suyu. Oh yeah, it's like, gonna be. What's, uh, what's gonna happen from then on? Like we can, we can get into an episode about that if you really want. Please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was really about. insistent on that. No, I'm just, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just, uh, I'm just really about that redemption arc. Uh, has he has any samurai wood? <laughs> I wanna I wanna throw up my dukes with the nose and just have a slug fest with them and then hug it out at the end. Well, if that is everything, then I guess we're good. We're good, we're all good. We're all good. Yup. So there you have it. Good. Those are the uh the, the speculations and ideas of the lovely people of RK Kelm. I was your host, Itsunair, and I hope you enjoyed the first episode of Radio AK. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment on below, and tell us what you think is what was under the mask, what you think is going to happen next, and we will see you next time on the next episode of Radio AK.